Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. It's Friday, so this photo Friday we're going to talk about copying photos from cards using Exposure X3 from Alien Skin. Hi folks, it's Friday. I was doing a bit of laundry earlier, I managed to clock my head picking up socks, getting stuff into the laundry basket. Yeah, silly, silly, silly me. I wouldn't mind, I was actually moving my head to avoid hitting it. So I just managed to hit it there instead of in the middle. So, yeah, but lovely little bump and lovely cut. Anyway, let's get on what we're talking about today, which is Alien Skin's Exposure X3. Before we go on, I'm actually just going to show you that I have an article about Exposure X3 today on Fujilove. So here's my article here on Alien Skin Exposure X3 Workflow Overview. Um, the address is there. I'm just going to share it in the description below as well, so you can go look at it. Now... Uh, this is a workflow overview, so you're, you're going to see it. Uh, so hopefully that will be of use for you. I do mention in this article you can copy from a card. Because of that, I'm actually doing this to show you how you can actually do it. So it's a little bit more straightforward than just reading an article. Okay, and you see these are the same images that I've used in that article. So let me just get started with it and show you how you can copy photos from your card into Exposure X3. Now the key to remember here is that it's not a catalogue. When you copy them across, it's just a copy onto your drive. You've just selected the destination and what metadata you're adding. And that metadata is actually residing in the folder inside. And I will show that to you when I do it. So literally what we start with here is we go File, Copy Photos from Card. And then we click OK and we're done. Boom. There we go. Shortest video ever. Not really. OK. There's a bit more to it than that. You could do that. But you're probably going to be left with not knowing where the files are and not having any changes made to them whatsoever. You may want to do that. But in general, you want to rename them and add metadata. So let's talk about how you do that. So the first thing we see is that in the source panel, we can see that we have something that looks like a card. Untitled. The cards are generally called untitled. DCIM, so it indicates that it's probably a media folder of some type, of type. And then we've got a name with Fuji on it. So we know it probably came from a Fuji camera. Uh, you can remove it by clicking the minus when it's selected or click plus to add more destinations or more sources rather. Okay. So in this case here, we can see that we've got 135 source files. So it's telling us there's 135 files there and we're going to copy 135 and we're going to delete none. So if we select delete originals, we can now see it says 135 to be deleted. But I don't recommend that. I recommend leaving them on the card and then formatting in camera, so that way you have those images as backups until you finally do format it in camera. You can also choose to only copy new photos, so if you've already copied stuff off this card, uh, it will only copy the newer stuff since the last time. So if I click that, we can see it'll have zero to be copied, because I have done this video about eight times with all sorts of things going wrong with the video recording itself. Uh, so yes, I have the opportunity to not use this now, shall we say. Right. We got our source, now we need to know where they're going. It's really important that when you're managing your files that you know where they are, because if you don't know where they are, they're useless. All right, so let us pick a destination. So you can have a few of the common destinations here, like your desktop, your pictures folder, your documents folder, your downloads folder, and your home folder. Now you may have somewhere specific that you want to do it, not Pacific like the ocean. Uh, so we choose other folder. Now in this case, I'm gonna put it into the same folder that these are in. And by the way, the reason why you can see these images when we have this one selected and they're in a subfolder is because I have this little icon here clicked and the orange means that it's showing subfolders. All right, so let me choose an other folder, which is going to be the one that we see there. So that's inside my G drive USB, which I haven't renamed even though I really should. I click open and that one has that one has the parent folder. Now I'm going to create dated folders, which is how I generally do it. And so let's do that. Uh, by the way, you can have these as presets. So there are some presets already here and you can save new presets when you're finished setting it up if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that in this case here, but I am going to add subfolders. So I'm going to add a date subfolder. So add capture date. I'm going to change it in this list down to year. I'm going to add a subfolder again, capture date. This time change it to month. And then add subfolder and the capture date of the day, there we go. Now, of course, I could put in, it could be really awkward and I could put in like custom text here. I'm not going to do that in this case. I could though, um, and it can be useful to do that to give it a name so that we could name it something. Uh, but for now, uh, 
just going to show you that so I can click here to get rid of that. So we've now created this setup here. So it will create inside Exposure X3, it will create a 2018 folder, inside that an 02 folder, and inside that a 16 folder. Well, it's actually going to be a 14 folder because it takes the date from the images themselves. So if there was more dates on the card, it would create a separate folder for each one based on the date. So you can also make a backup copy and you can select a location here. And uh, that literally just will open up the file browser similarly to what was there and give you a location that you can select and it will dump all of the images in that. Not going to use that in this case here. Uh, you can also rename. So I click on rename to rename them. And um, it's starting off with just a little sequence here, but we're going to change that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just delete that one. And I'm going to go add. And again, I'm going to go capture time. I'm going to give it this full year date. And I'm going to add some custom text. And I'm going to put in some dashes. And I'm going to call it back dash tattoo. The reason I do the dashes is because Google will read these file names uh, with spaces. The dash acts as spaces in those cases. And a dash. So I want to keep the date separate from the words, separate from the sequence, so that they don't run together. So Google sees them as uh, actual words rather than just a jumble of text and, and numbers in this case. Right, so I then want to add something else, which in this case will be a sequence. I'm going to go for a four digit sequence. And it's counting up the sequences from the last couple of times. So the 136, the original import for my test was 135. So it's just incremented from there. I want to go back to one. So I'm just going to edit that and click one. And uh, so that's my start here. Now you can choose to have upper or lower case. Uh, I don't really mind, uppercase is fine. If the file exists, it will bring up a dialog box asking what to do. And the options it will have in that dialog box will be keep, both, replace, skip, and also probably cancel. I think so if I remember correctly from doing this a few minutes ago, it has cancel as well. So now you can apply metadata as well. So let's apply metadata. Again, you can create presets for this here and select them from there should you do so. So option G, or I think it's Alt 0169 uh, semicolon on PC or just copy and paste it. Uh, stick in your name, all that kind of stuff. All right, and you can put in all of your contact information. Uh, I wouldn't bother with titles and captions within presets because if you're doing them in presets, then it just really kind of makes sense. Um, but I will put in some keywords and some of these are already in and so they will auto fill. So tattoo, because there's somebody's back tattoo and uh, the lady has her front is covered uh, you can't see anything and in the actual studio as well she had a tape on so that her she was modest back shot yeah shot uh, studio okay and now i'm just going to put in the collection tattoo collection so we're going to stick it into that so that's now ready to go so it's now telling me that it's going to add all of this information make these changes bring in 135 files. So I click OK and it's going to start to do that. And then uh, we will see that because we've got the parent folder selected already, it will start to show us them populating the actual drive. And dialog should come up now. And so we can see it's starting to pull in those files fairly quickly. And I will just skip to the end now here for you. And so that's the last few files just coming in there. And if we just scroll down here to the bottom of our folders panel, we can see we've got our collections. And if we jump to tattoo, we see that these images are now in the tattoo collection as well. If I right click on an image and go, uh, where are we now? Reveal in Finder. It will open up the folder and show us the folder. And if we go down to the bottom of this folder, we can see we've got this alien skin folder. And inside that, we have these dot exposure x3 files that have the same name as these files here. These contain the metadata essentially that is associated. So in this case, it's just going to be the keywords and just information that is read from the files themselves. As you create settings and add ratings and stuff like that, these all get applied here. This is how Alien Skin is able to manage all of this information without having a catalog. One thing worth mentioning as well is that this week until February 20th, there's actually 20% off or more uh, when you buy any of the Alien Skin applications, including Exposure X3. So if you were thinking about trying or buying it, now is actually a good time to go get it. But do get the trial and give it a go. And if you like it, please do buy it. I do have a link below. It is an affiliate link. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does give me a little bit of something to help along, you know, with the process of making these videos. 
So that folks is how you copy from Carrot with Alien Skins Exposure X3. Folks, if you liked the video, give me the thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. It really is encouraging for me to know that the effort I put into these videos, and sometimes they can take ages to do, uh, is worth it. Uh, obviously, it costs me money to do these and my time to do it, but it costs you nothing to have access to them. So please do subscribe. Uh, if you are subscribed and you want to get notified of when these videos come online, please, please do hit the bell. Google will notify you that I have a new video out. Thank you. I appreciate that it does take time to watch these and I do, 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 do appreciate it. And so thank you for doing that and I will see you in the next video.